One of the things that happens in the fourth quarter of the year, I don't know if you realize this or not, is we focus on getting more done. There's a statistic that says we get more done in the fourth quarter sometimes than the rest of the year in its entirety. Why? Because something happens in the fourth quarter where you tend to get more focus, right? And so as you're starting to think about having more focus, it just felt like a good time to talk about some ways to do that. Really, some ways to get things done, because if you're going to go forward in your career, you have to get things done. And so I wanted to share with you four keys, four keys to get things done. And here's the good news. The good news is that some of these aren't new things you need to start doing. Quite frankly, they're things you need to stop doing. Yeah. Okay. Things you need to stop doing. So the first thing, though, it is a start doing, if you're not doing this already, prioritization. Prioritization. Let's assume you've got your vision, you've got your mission, you have your goals, but now you need to prioritize what work you're going to do in order to reach those goals. There's a healthy thing that you can do, which is the top of each day, setting two or three priorities for the day, right? Setting two or three priorities for the day. In other words, two or three things you write down on paper, put on a sticky note on the side of your computer, put on a note on side inside of your uh, electronic device, whatever works for you in terms of keeping it in front of you, but identifying two to three things that you say, hook a crook, I'm going to get those done today. Hook a crook, I'm going to get those done today. Working them into your calendar appropriately, making sure that you don't let other things overtake them, and really saying, I'm not going to turn off the lights in this office until these two or three things get done. And off, obviously, they are associated and aligned with your goals and where you're trying to go. Okay, so that's point one, prioritization. Point two, stop multitasking. <laughs> it does not work. Scientists have looked at this over and over again. Multitasking does not work. It, it, it doesn't work. It makes you jump back and forth between things in your brain. And so you lose any momentum on item one when you jump to item two. Then you lose that momentum item two when you jump back to item one. And by the way, going further back on item one, et cetera, it slows you down, scientists say, as your brain switches back and forth. Part point two, it impairs the executive function of the brain. The executive function is defined as the area that does the goal shifting and rule activation. Think about that how your brain works, goal shifting and rule activation. And in three, it can impair your cognitive resources. Okay. It can impair you. So stop multitasking. Okay. Number three, and this is a big one, fight off distractions. So it's a stop, stop letting distractions get in your way. And there's a number of distractions I couldn't help, but itemize a bit looking at what some other folks said that, that really resonated with me. One social media. You gotta pull up on some social media, okay? We all know it's a distraction. We we can talk about it at any lunch conversation, any dinner conversation, but we routinely go right back to it. Fight it off, recognize it for what it is. And maybe in this context of knowing that it could take you off the beating path of getting things done, fight it off as a distraction. Another distraction, continuously adding new things to your plate. You only have so much capacity. You don't get a 25th hour of the day. You don't get an eighth day of the week. And so you need to manage the time that you have. We all get the same amount of time. And we can only put so many things in that plate. It's like a pizza. There's eight slices or whatever it is. You can cut into 12 slices. It only is going to be so large. And so you need to think about reducing the number of slices so you can get the big things done. If you put too many, keep putting more in there, you've got to slice up everything even more and give it less of your time and attention. And that's something you should be very conscious about. Another distraction, regrets, mulling over things you wish you would have done better, done differently, so on and so forth. Move on. Yeah, I know. It sounds harsh. Move on. I'm talking to myself, too, by the way. Anything I'm saying here, I'm talking to myself as well. Trig is not uh, absolved <laughs> from all these things. I got some of the same issues. Another one, grudges. Spending time thinking about who may have done you wrong, what they meant, he or she, so on and so forth. And you know what? In, in 90, 95% of the cases, those folks have moved on to other things. You should move on too. Don't let that become a distraction using your mental energy, doing mental gymnastics about what happened, so on and so forth. Regrets and grudges really fill that space. Toxic relationships, relationships that don't serve you. And by the way, that's not to be mean or to be uh, a taker, but it should be, relationships should mentally be neutral. You walk away with them not feeling, you may not feel better, but you don't feel bad. You may don't feel like you gained, but you shouldn't feel like you lost, right? And so 
great relationships, you're going up on the elevator together. If you're going down constantly in these relationships and you know it, you know that's a toxic relationship. You need to identify it as such and take the appropriate action. Last one, the pursuit, well, two more, I'm sorry. The pursuit of perfection. We know perfection is fleeting. It's pointless. Spending time figuring out how you're going to dial into being 99.99% right all the time could be a severe waste of time. I remember when I went through Six Sigma training years ago and you really learned what Six Sigma was and that level of precision. One of the things I would, I never forget the instructor saying is not everything needs to be Six Sigma, right? Flying an airplane and that plane landing and taking off with a level of Six Sigma. Oh, absolutely. But does everything we do need that level of accuracy? No. And two, again, it's not achievable. So, so don't, so don't kill yourself with that. The last one I'm going to mention is poor boundaries. Make sure you set up boundaries for yourself so other things don't become distractions. If you have a set time that you're going to check emails during the day, set times that you're going to respond to others, set times that you're going to make phone calls and such, keep to those boundaries and don't let people intrude on those boundaries. You have to manage those boundaries in order to achieve the goals you have set out for yourself. Okay, so those are the three things so far, right? One, prioritizing. Two, stop multitasking. It does not work. Three, fight off distractions. The last one <laughs> is some work for you to do, which is study yourself. Yes, study yourself. And I'm going to give you a way to think about it. When you look at your work week, one of the things you can do is create a grid for yourself of how you're going to use your time. You're going to have administrative and planning. You're going to have, and by administration, I mean, again, responding to emails, responding to text messages, making follow-up phone calls, so on and so forth, all that are necessary work to do. And planning, meaning getting yourself ready for the next thing, making sure you walk into each meeting prepared, making sure you've planned for the week and making sure that you've given people that you give support to or direction to all the things they need. But the second thing you're going to have is routine meetings that contribute to your goals. You want to map those out, make sure they're plotted along the schedule. Then you're going to also have some routine things that don't necessarily contribute to their goals, but they're not pushing them in the other direction, but they also may not be uh, discretionary, meaning you have to show up to those things. Okay, map all that out. The next thing you do is then week over week, just take a look back. And this doesn't have to be a calculation, doesn't have to be super granular, but just look and see, did you spend the time in the ways that you said you would, again, in order to achieve your goals. So in this way, I love to do this. Every now and then I try to do this, I don't know, every 12 weeks or so, just to, just to dial back and look and say, man, am I spending my time the right way? Am I at my highest and best use? And so a way to go back and do it in, in, is look at your calendar and what you actually did from the prior week and be honest and say, these items were all aligned or planned, right? So it was the plan I, I had, I executed against it, or it's another thing that I wound up doing. It wasn't a plan, but it's still aligned to my goal. And what I would suggest to you is color code those things green. So, so again, one of the, one of the steps I, mi I missed here is going back to your calendar and printing it out. Because that way you can have it in front of you. I'm, I'm, I think visualizations give you power. So put it on a little, little paper in front of you. Take a little green marker if you can find one. And just put green next to the items that were planned, you executed, or new items that are aligned to where you want to go. The second thing you do is then identify all those things that weren't planned, but like they're somewhat necessary. You could kind of say, yeah, I, yeah, I need to be there. It's not discretionary. It kind of contributes to where I want to go. Again, it's not adverse. It's not taking me in the opposite direction or off my beaten path. Give those a yellow. Okay. And then the last one you want to do is look for all those things that weren't planned that you wanted to spend the time on that absolutely take you off the path. They have, they, they're making no contribution at all to where you want to go, okay? All those things that seem like emergencies, other people's emergencies, unplanned events, so on and so forth. And you look back at them and go, man, if I had 40 hours last week, those, whatever, four or five hours really made no contribution to where I'm trying to go. Mark all those things red. And so now you have this green, yellow, red picture where you can just zoom back for a second and take a look and say, I hope it's mostly green, right? I hope it is predominantly green on my paper. But if you could look at it from an eye shot and say, man, there's a lot of yellow in there. That means you just have to plan more and stick to the plan. And then if there's tons 
of red in there, that means you have to step up on defining and holding to your boundaries, family. Go forth, take this, be a leader, lead yourself as a start as you continue to progress in your career.